Hello everyone, and welcome to this video on the NWO TTW project Fishing for Functional Feed, which focuses on creating a toolbox to investigate novel fish feed. For this project, Wageningen University is working together with Skretting ARC, Nordis, and Future Genomics. Demand for fish for consumption is increasing throughout the world, and is projected to keep rising further. This means that going out and catching fish in your boat won't be enough to satisfy this demand. Fish farms, however, provide a good alternative for adding to the total fish harvest. A major downside of fish farms is that one of the main ways to feed the fish is through fish meal as a protein source. This has several disadvantages. First of all, fish meal is not a sustainable resource, but it's also relatively expensive. As an alternative, people have been trying plant-based proteins, for example, from soybean meal. However, using mainly plant-based proteins results in enteritis, inflammation of the intestine, causing distress and poor growth. Here, for example, you can see the salmon intestine in a normal situation on the left, and on the right the effect soybean meal will have after only five weeks. Because a full diet contains a lot of different nutritional and anti-nutritional factors, and combinations of feed ingredients can have effects that are difficult to predict, we need to use a model setup to quickly test diets. Salmon, while commonly used in fish farms, are unsuitable for large-scale testing, as salmon studies are time-consuming and quite expensive. This project aims to develop such a model and use it to create a method for high-throughput protein pre-screening for fish diets and, in the process, learn more about the fundamental processes that ensure fish intestinal health. What are we looking at to achieve this? Zebrafish are a known model organism often used for scientific studies. They have a short generation time, are small and easy to keep, and zebrafish larvae have the added boon that they are transparent. In this picture, for example, you can see white blood cells tagged with a fluorescent marker, so you can see how the immune system is responding. In this picture, for example, the green and red cells aggregate in the intestines in response to feed, giving a yellow signal. If there would be a larger inflammation response, there would be a stronger signal. Here's a different way to utilize the model. In this picture, it's not white blood cells, but sugar molecules that are labeled. That way, if you see the fluorescent signal somewhere other than the intestine, you know that there is some sort of damage. They're leaking out of the intestine, which requires further study. It's also possible to see how well the gut functions based on how the feed moves through it, like here. You can see that this diet, where the green marker is not going all the way through the fish gut, is not as effective as this control diet. To further assist in this project, the Danio Vision, developed by Nordus, has been further adapted to study behavioural responses in the zebrafish larvae. The camera setup, combined with a suite for video processing, allows for quick analyses of the fish's responses to different types of feed. For example, we can see whether they move more or less, and whether they prefer warmer or colder environments. By combining these different methods and tools, this project intends to create a way to quickly screen novel feed, as well as expand what we already know about fish immunology, and in doing so, perhaps, we can tip the scales in our favour. Thank you for watching.